Hello, uh, my name is Raman Muthusamy. I'm a clinical professor of medicine uh, at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. I'm also a director of interventional endoscopy for uh, UCLA Health System, uh, and I'm uh, here to speak today uh, about uh, a manuscript that's been accepted for publication in gastrointestinal endoscopy entitled Plastic Stil uh, Biliary Stent Patency uh, in Patients with Locally Advanced Pancreatic Adenocarcinoma Receiving Downstaging Chemotherapy. Uh, we noticed at our institution that uh, many patients who were receiving plastic stents um, undergoing downstaging chemotherapy for malignant obstruction from pancreas cancer uh, were coming in sooner than uh, the planned stent exchange uh, had uh, been arranged for. And this was often due to a variety of factors. Sometimes it was due to just blood work uh, showing abnormal um, AST, ALT, or uh, liver function tests. Uh, other uh, times it was due to development of jaundice, and sometimes it was even due to the development of cholangitis. So, so we went back with colleagues uh, from uh, Northwestern uh, Memorial Hospital in Chicago, Illinois, and the Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida, and looked to see uh, what our combined experiences were uh, for similar patients. And so we did a retrospective study that spanned from 1996 to 2013, um, and uh, we uh, <clears throat> really were looking uh, for patients who were uh, diagnosed with pancreatic adenocarcinoma uh, and who had malignant biliary, malignant, biliary, malignant biliary obstruction, uh, who had locally advanced or borderline resectable uh, disease uh, and were undergoing downstaging chemotherapy. And all these patients had to have 10 French or greater stents uh, placed. Uh, they also had to have all their stent exchanges uh, at uh, one of the participating institutions uh, and patients uh, could not have had a metal stent placed at any point uh, during their um, uh, stenting course. Uh, patients uh, had to have also pancreatic adenocarcinoma. We did not look at patients uh, with uh, cholangiocarcinoma. Uh, and so uh, in the course of uh, doing our uh, study, we identified 173 patients and 233 stent exchanges. Uh, and we found that patients were really grouped into three categories. One group uh, was found uh, to have um, uh, initial stent placement, which was removed at the time of surgery. So these were people who were successfully downstaged to the point of undergoing resection. That was 87 patients. 63 patients had stent exchanges performed at the time uh, that they were scheduled. So it was essentially a proper uh, spaced interval. But 83 patients had a premature uh, stent exchange. Uh, this constituted 35.6% of all stent exchanges. Um, the median uh, stent patency duration for all of uh, all patients combined was uh, uh, 53 days. Um, and uh, in those uh, who had uh, a premature exchange, uh, the median stent patency was only uh, 49 days, really only about seven weeks rather than the typical manufacturer uh, estimate of 12 weeks. Uh, and this uh, really, uh, we also found that if you had a premature stent exchange, 44.6% uh, of those patients were hospitalized, and a total of 15% of our total uh, stent exchanges uh, developed cholangitis uh, before the next uh, interval. Uh, and in fact, when we look back at the entire 12 weeks, uh, if we, you know, how many patients made it to 12 weeks, uh, as would be suggested by uh, typically what would be seen by a manufacturer recommendation, we found that only 34% of patients uh, who underwent stenting still had a patent stent uh, at 12 weeks. Um, <clears throat> we also noted another factor was, in addition to uh, the uh, uh, presence of chemotherapy, uh, was the length of the stent. Uh, so patients who had a seven centimeter or longer stent uh, were more likely to have uh, a stent, uh, premature stent occlusion than those who had a seven centimeter or less than seven centimeter stent. Um, and uh, that difference was about 48% compared to 24%. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, prior to this study, it had been our practice uh, to primarily place uh, uh, plastic stents in patients undergoing uh, downstaging chemotherapy. Um, as uh, this result of this study, uh, when we do do that at this point, we do it uh, at the shorter intervals instead of having 12-week uh, intervals. Uh, we've dropped that now to six to seven weeks uh, given uh, uh, these data. Increasingly, there's been a trend also uh, to move towards doing uh, short, uh, fully covered metal stents 
uh, for uh, these patients. Uh, while our study did not specifically address that issue, uh, that uh, is certainly uh, an area that future research should be conducted towards in comparing prospectively uh, doing a fully covered stent versus um, uh, plastic stents to see uh, outcomes and, and cost. Uh, our group has done a cost analysis uh, modeling uh, the available data so far, uh, which suggests that uh, patients undergoing initial metal stenting uh, may have an advantage uh, in this situation of cost. Uh, and we found the one-year cost for uh, stenting associated with maintaining uh, a patent uh, a biliary system in patients with malignant obstruction uh, from pancreas cancer is $6,500 if you use a covered metal stent uh, versus $17,700 for plastic stents. And this difference in price is due to the increased number of ERCPs as well as complications including hospitalizations uh, as resulting from uh, primarily from cholangitis. Uh, so certainly future research uh, needs to be done comparing uh, plastic uh, to metal stents in this setting. Um, <clears throat> the exact etiology for why we're seeing this reduction in stent patency remains a, a little bit unclear. Um, in our study, uh, some of these patients underwent uh, chemotherapy, some underwent chemo and radiation. It's not clear how, what effect the radiation uh, may have had as well, uh, as well as the choice of chemotherapeutics or some drugs associated with uh, uh, different rates of occlusion than others. Uh, one thought is, is that immunosuppression may lead to an increased ability of biofilm to develop. Uh, and of course, in the greater the length of stent, uh, the potential greater length uh, for a blockage to develop somewhere along there, uh, leading to potentially the findings we saw with the increased stent length being associated with more frequent uh, need for reintervention. Uh, the concept of uh, sort of moving towards uh, uh, either shorter exchanges or particularly moving towards uh, potentially larger diameter stents, metal stents, uh, covered metal stents, has been supported by recent changes in the National Comprehensive uh, Cancer Network uh, guidelines for managing uh, uh, locally advanced uh, and borderline resectable pancreas cancer, uh, where it's now suggested that uh, short metal stents be considered uh, as initial therapy. Um, one other uh, potential research uh, study uh, to look into this area would be to look at the role of multiple plastic stents in lieu of a single stent uh, to see if the wicking that could occur between uh, these stents uh, may be uh, an alternative uh, uh, to a single stent that would still provide improved patency at a reduced cost uh, compared to uh, metallic stenting. Uh, so in summary, uh, our study suggests that uh, in patients who are undergoing uh, biliary stenting uh, for uh, locally advanced uh, pancreatic adenocarcinoma um, with downstaging chemotherapy, if you're going to use a plastic stent, um, uh, despite the fact that manufacturer recommendations suggest that a 10 French stent should last 12 weeks, uh, we would recommend uh, shortening the interval for stent exchange uh, to something under uh, seven weeks, uh, which uh, is, appears to be the patency uh, seen in our retrospective study.